We're now going to look at how to construct isolines. When constructing isolines, you're giving a sequence of heights and different spots. And I want to show you the basics on how to connect these isolines. And the way you would do it is, for example, if, you, if we want to draw the 70 isolines, what we would do, first we would look for the height that is 70, which is right there. And then we would find another spot where the height on the map is possibly 70. Between 66 and 73, that height, somewhere in between there, we'd find the 70 um, height mark as well. Also between 69 and 72, we would find the 70 mark there. So we'll put a dot there. Between 68 and 71, yes, 70 would be there. It would fall between there. And 70 would also fall between 67 and 72. So once we have that information, then we simply connect the dots and we draw the line. But we can't leave the line on the map like that. It has to exit the map or it has to loop back around and close. And in this case, the line doesn't loop back around. Instead, we must just exit the map. Now up here, we must find a location to exit the map as well. And that location would be between 68 and 71. So we'll just connect the dot there and exit the map. And so that's how we would find the 70 ISO line. If we wanted to find the 75 ISO line, the easiest way is to first look for 75. Sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not. In this case it is, it's right there. And then we'll look around to see where 75, the height of 75 would lie again. And looking at the numbers, would it lie between 73 and 75? No, it wouldn't. Would it lie between 75 and 78? No, it wouldn't. Would it lie between 74 and 78? Yes, it would. 75 would be between there. Would it lie between 74 and 77? Yes, it would. And let's look back down here. It wouldn't lie between 75 and 81. It would lie between 72 and 77. And then again between 73 and 77. And again, between 73 and 78, that height would lie there. And between 74 and 79. So let's just connect the dots. And once we connect these dots, what you'll find is that we found the 75 ISO line. Again, the line cannot just sit there on the map like that. So we have to exit the map. We'll try one more and look for the 85 ISO line. Let's first look and see if there is an 85. I don't see an 85, but we can look for a point where 85 would lie, which would be between 83 and 86. I mean, that's just one place where it would have lied. We could have also started here between 81 and 86, and also between 82 and 87. And 85, would it lie between 83 and 80? No, it wouldn't. Okay, so we can connect those dots so far. 85 would lie between 80 and 87. So we can connect the dot there as well. And that's about it. We'll have to leave the map. And that's how we draw in the 85 ISO line. Now let's look at an, at an example that involves an, an, a real map or an actual map of a country. Now on this map, let's try and find the 30 ISO line. First, we look for 30 and we connect it to all of the spots or the spot heights that are 30 and we exit the map, and that's the 30 ISO line. Let's look for the, the 40. We can start up here, and you follow the map. This one is pretty easy because you don't have to figure out the numbers in between other numbers. You just look, the numbers are right there. 40 is right there. And the 50 ISO line would run there, also there. Now here's where it can get a little bit tricky. We cannot have these two lines just sitting there like that. It has to either connect or leave the map. And so we'll look at the contours again. There's 40 and there's 60 there. So 50 should lie somewhere in the middle. And so we'll bring that line there. And there's 40 and 70. 50 will lie between there. 40 and 60, it'll lie between there. And also between 40 and 80. So now we just connect those lines and we exit the map there. And up here we did the same and we exit the map. And so that's an example of how we would draw ISO lines.